now that you've at least been exposed to the maps and the equations that we use to estimate some of the characteristics of these superchargers, we're going to do a very basic example here. So I'm going to take the two superchargers available in the Lotus market, the M62 and the 1320, and do a comparison as if you just swapped one for the other. So we're going to fix the, the pulley ratio at 90 millimeters, which basically means we're going to spin both superchargers at the same speed. Now because the TVS is larger by 30%, you'll see that the output characteristics are quite a bit different between the two. For the M62, the, at, with a 90 millimeter pulley, at 8,000 engine RPMs, you'll roughly make around 7 PSI of boost, or a 1.5 pressure ratio. And again, these numbers can be adjusted based on what you've done to the engine or uh, camshafts and things of that nature. Uh, if you're making seven pounds of boost, the, the temperature increase due to that pressure increase is roughly 140 degrees Fahrenheit with the M62. Um, the drive power is approximately 20 horsepower, and the airflow coming through it is in the neighborhood of 675 meters cubed per hour. So if you take the same characteristics with the 1320, again running it at the same RPM, you get almost 15 pounds of boost coming out of it, or a pressure ratio of 2 to 1. The intake air temperature after the supercharger would be pretty hot because of that increase in pressure, almost a little over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it's higher than whatever the ambient was. The drive power to turn that supercharger is also high because you're creating a lot of heat, and that you know it takes power to, to make that uh, air get compressed, which also has to make the heat. So you're looking at almost 37 horsepower to turn it at that point. And then, but you do get a lot more airflow out, which is why the, the TVS would make a lot more power. You're looking at 875 meters cubed per hour instead of 675. So now that we've done the basic uh, analysis of what happens if you just straight drop the superchargers on, uh, you have to kind of then rethink what you want to do from an application perspective. Obviously the TVS at 15 pounds, non-intercooled, I don't think anybody's out running around with that. It, would, it doesn't make sense. You'll have too much engine damage. So what you can do with a supercharger that's slightly on the larger side is find different methods to reduce the pressure coming out of the supercharger. And that has a couple of different impacts. One, it helps to reduce that temperature because you're not compressing the air so much. And two, it, it makes the engine, the usage of that supercharger on a stock engine that much safer. So there's a few different methods for doing that. Um, the original Lotus method for reducing power with a supercharger application in the 07 model year was to close the throttle blade. They just simply didn't open the throttle blade all the way. And when you do that, what happens is you put a restriction in front of the supercharger. So even though your output is reduced, you're only making six or seven pounds of boost, you're actually making a lot more heat because the effective pressure ratio across the supercharger is much higher. So the second strategy you can do to try to handle some of the uh, undesired boost level, if you will, is to use the, the lower port on the uh, bypass valve. Now on this particular one the, the port's been broken off but this is where you would tap back in and what you can do is under higher pressures, let's say you want to make nine pounds of boost with this TVS, once you get up to nine pounds of boost you put you apply pressure to this section here which opens the bypass valve and by opening that bypass valve you've created a leak around the engine if you will so instead of the air going into the engine it's going back in front of the supercharger. Now, when you do that, you're going to lower the amount of airflow going through the engine, which means you're going to lower the amount of power you're making coming out of there, which if that's your goal to try to have a safe application, is perfectly acceptable. Uh, most OEMs use this approach. If you see a supercharger that uh, you know, is slightly larger, there'll be a solenoid that controls the ability to actuate the, the supercharger can under boost. Uh, the Corvette ZR1 is a good example. They have to open the bypass on the high end to uh, keep the engine to only make 638 horsepower. The, the final piece when you do that is that you take into account, and it's a relatively small one, um, if, you're, if you are intercooled it's not a very big deal, but if you are non-intercooled you need to recognize that that airflow that you've just heated up in the supercharger and then sent back into the inlet is hot and you have a temperature increase and so that's going to warm up going back into the supercharger and then you're going to compress it again and you do need to take into account that temperature loop that can occur there and make sure that you're not trying to bypass an enormous amount of air relative to the amount of air going through the supercharger. So that bypass strategy has limits uh, associated with it but it's a pretty good one and you know, for what we're talking about in the Lotus market would be an uh, acceptable solution.
another method that you can use to reduce the pressure in the manifold is to change one of the assumptions that we baked into our analysis. Uh, that specific assumption is the combustion dynamics associated with this engine. Uh, on the 2ZZ, the way you can actually affect combustion dynamics the most is by changing the cam timing uh, relative to what the factory cam timing was. Uh, because there's a cam phaser on the intake shaft, you can change when that opens and closes the intake valve. And by doing that, you can actually reduce the manifold pressure. When you do that cam timing change, it does have an effect of increasing the overlap. We, we had looked at trying to get a CARB approval on a TVS application, and the impact is, is that when you swing that intake cam forward, you start increasing the overlap, which increases the amount of raw air and fuel going out the exhaust. And that dramatically affects the emissions, especially on an application like the Lotus, which was marginally able to meet the emissions in the first place coming out of the factory. So the other piece of the puzzle that you have to take into account when you're doing that is you change the gas mixture coming out of the, the exhaust port. You now have an increase in oxygen content of air as well as raw fuel heading down to the converter. And this may or may not be an issue, but it's something you need to check. So what you have to do is put a thermocouple into the front converter brick and measure the heat of the catalytic reaction that's actually occurring in the converter. Because as you've added that extra oxygen to the exhaust stream, you've given an, the ability to put more heat into the converter. If you think of holding up a, a piece of wood that's been on fire that's um, kind of as a burning ember, and if you blow on it, that it, you see it glow, and that glow is increasing the heat of that particular piece. Now, when you'd be doing this kind of cam phaser strategy, you're going to be doing it wide open throttle with a heavy air fuel ratio. So, it may or may not be okay, it's just something that has to be taken into account or else you'll have converter durability problems. So all three of those systems are different ways you can, you can adjust a larger supercharger to meet the needs of the application that, that's desired. Um, if you have a smaller supercharger and you want to turn it up, there's nothing you can do. The harder and harder you press that, the more and more heat you make, the more and more drive loss it takes to get there, and it simply just won't flow the air. But if you have a big supercharger, the, the trick is how do you turn it down appropriately? If you're able to put a, an infinitely large pulley onto the system, larger than 90 millimeters, you could slow the supercharger down, which would reduce the boost by reducing the airflow as well. However, in the Lotus applications, it's hard to package any larger superchargers. Plus, by spinning the supercharger faster, you're able to increase the throttle response down low because you're putting more air in. And then you just have to come up with a way to limit the pressure and temperatures on the high end. So using one of the three things we've talked about. So that concludes our second video here in the educational series on superchargers. Uh, I know it's a very complicated subject and we were only able to just skim the surface of the uh, analysis and impacts of changes to these devices, but I hope it gives you a general sense of what it takes to be able to evaluate these things. Uh, there's a lot of little details that you have to take into account when you're putting one of these onto the car or modifying it.